Hey, what's up? It's Paul from Guitar World, and today I'm going to be showing you how to install strap locks, specifically Grover's brand new quick release strap locks. So let's get to it. So why strap locks? Well, if you're a live performer, or you rock really hard or you thrash or flail around on stage, at some point, your strap is going to become disengaged from your guitar and it will not look cool. So you'll need a strap lock, especially if you do that. And more importantly, if you one of those guys who loves to throw the guitar behind your back and make it come around the other side, you'll need a strap lock. What I'm going to be doing is I'm using this particular Epiphone Les Paul, which is a perfect example of a guitar that definitely needs a strap lock. Mostly because where the end pins are located, like the one that's over here, is where you'll find it on most Les Paul shapes. And if you get up and you're really rocking hard, this will generally pop right off. So you'll definitely need a strap lock for that. And sometimes too, on, this, on the end bit, if you bear down on it, it'll pop off on the back end as well. So for this video, I'm gonna be using Grover's Quick Release Strap Locks. And you should know that Grover is primarily known for their tuning keys or tuners. They make a wide variety of replacement tuners, and of course you'll find their great tuners on you know, many classic guitars as well as brand name guitars because they're a premium tuning key company. They make a bunch from 18 to one gear ratio, which is what you want. And of course this guitar has Grover tuners as well. But what you don't know is they have an accessories division and this is part of it. So I'm gonna use this and it's a really great quick release strap lock system. So in order to get the job done, you're going to need a few things. Primarily, the guitar you're changing the uh, end pins with, your favorite strap that you're going to do it, the strap locks, and the tools you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need Phillips head screwdriver. And then what you'll need is either a wrench, another wrench, or the proper size wrench for the nut that is here. In this case, this is a half inch or a torque wrench. So any of these will do. And last but not least, a toothpick. This is optional, but more about that later. Okay, step one, what you're gonna need to do is remove the end pins from your guitar. I need this. All right, let's just do that. So one thing to note as I'm changing the end, you know, as I'm removing the end pins and going to be installing, some guys will like to use a power drill. I don't recommend that because sometimes you can over, over drill and strip the wood in this case. So it's better that you just use a normal Phillips head screwdriver like I am using right now so that you don't really strip the wood or just over, over drill. So this one you can get more of a feel of what you're doing. So let's talk about the toothpick here, which I have over here really quick. Now that I've removed the end pins, especially if you have an older guitar or guitars that had a lot of wear and tear, especially with the constant you know, wear and tear of just having a strap or older strap locks on it as well, eventually the wood inside of the guitar kind of gets stripped or the screw hole to the end pins kind of gets stripped. So if you're putting in new end pins, or in this case, we're putting in strap locks, a cool little hack, what I do, is to use a toothpick to kind of give yourself a little more, a little more torque and of course some wood. And the best way to do it is basically is to put the toothpick inside the hole until it stops and then break it off. You can use wood glue if you want. You don't necessarily need it, but I just broke off, you know, some some extra wood, so now it gives me something a little more to latch onto when I install the new end pin, which is what I'm gonna do right now. So now I'm just gonna line it up and start putting that in here. So there we go. Same idea here, just take the toothpick Stick it in the same area, break it off, and now we have more wood. You're putting wood on wood, which is great. And adding 
little bit to the strap lock. So I should also mention that the Epiphone also had like a little bit of a, a little bit of a rubber guard here. You don't necessarily need it, but I'm gonna keep it on there anyway, and then just screw the existing strap lock with it. Okay, we're good. So now that the Grover quick release end pins here are in place, and you can see they're firmly in there because I added that toothpick in there to really just get them in tight so that nothing's gonna come out. You can see the system itself is, is sort of a U-shaped system, and this is a very common quick release system. So basically what happens after I put this, attach this onto the strap, you basically lift this up and slide it over and drop it onto the end pin, and now it's locked in place. So that just gives you an idea of how it works. And then to remove it, you lift it up again and then slide out from that U-shaped housing. So guitar end pins are done. Now let's move on to getting these onto your strap. So first you're gonna need to remove the, the nut and the washer. And then here's the actual quick release part. So what you do now is you take your strap, take the quick release bit, push it through the strap hole until you start to see the threading on the quick release strap. Once you see that, you push it all the way down till it's really as tight as you can go. Then you put the washer over the top, then take the nut, put it over that, and then kind of start turning and threading it, just like that. We'll tighten that in a moment. Now, what I like to do is, this is the end, this is the part of the end pin on the tail end of the guitar. So what I tend to do is kind of find the proper angle that it's gonna land. On the end pin, you can leave it pretty much straight up to it, you know, to where it is. But you can see I've kind of angled it just a little bit because it moves a little. Now we're also gonna do it on the front end. This is where it gets tricky. This one, this one is where you wanna angle it a little more towards yourself. So let's, let's do that. So the same applies here, pop it through until you start to see the threading. You can, you can angle it a little bit if you wish, but try to keep it somewhat straight towards the strap line. Throw the, throw the washer on top of it. Then the nut over here. And then kind of thread it through. It's important to kind of hold it here because as you're turning the nut, this this part of the, the bottom half of the shell here is gonna move. So try and keep it, you know, in place as you're just slightly turning it. So once you got that, this is where you start to use either a wrench here to get it really tight. So you can use that as I show in here and just keep turning till it gets tight. Or if you want a more, like I said, a more specific wrench to really get it right. You can do that as well. Just keep turning until it's tight. Or you can use a torque wrench. This is a bit extreme. You don't need to, but this works just as well. I generally just like using a normal wrench and just turning this until it gets super, super tight. Same goes for the bottom here, which I put on earlier. Also what I do is sometimes just to give your hand a break, you kind of bend the strap so that it gives you a little bit of a gloved, <laughs> gloved hand here as you turn. And it also keeps it in place as well. And that's pretty tight. You don't have to go too nuts. So now once you have your strap locks affixed to your strap, next step of course is to grab your guitar and take the little top end piece over here and you pick it up 
and hold it. And then where the U-shaped housing is in the entrance area over here, you slide it into the, the end pin and then do the same for it on this end as well. I'm lifting it and then putting it over, let go, and that's it. You're officially ready to rock.